Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. And now let's go to Off the Press, where we have a quick review of the stories making headlines across Nigeria today. We're going to be kicking off with the uh, Daily Independent. And of course, our guest, Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner, will be joining us via phone. Uh, good morning, Mr. Kolawole. Good morning, my brother. Thanks for joining How us. How was your weekend? It was beautiful. Welcome once Thank again. Thank you. Thank you. Now, let's start with the Daily Independent uh, newspapers. Should be on your screen in just a few seconds. Yes, it says travel at risk as vandalism of airports critical equipment spikes. How Nigeria can cut $1 billion annual importation of egg powder. And also, we trekked four days to our doctor's den, says the Free Tejina Islamia school pupils. Emirates extend ban on Nigerian flights till September. And also, Dangote's $2 billion petrochemical plant to produce 77 grades of polypropylene. Still on the Daily Independent, why Secundus may not return as PDP national chairman. And um, controversy trails death of Captain Bala Naalaz, uh, who's a Kebi senator's son. Paralympics Nigeria's Omolayo wins gold, sets new record. These are some of the big ones on the Daily Independent. Now let's uh, quickly see what we can find on the Nation newspapers. Just a few stories. Uh, we can see here, the, uh, Kayamo, government unaware of planned power tariff uh, hike. Also on the Nation, um, gunmen kill Senator's son. NMA issues, uh, uh, NMA's 21-day uh, strike uh, notice unfair, says Ngige. And why revenue formula needs review, and that's by the RMAFC. Uh, there's also a big story. It's a, a, a court proceedings. A court sacked Taiwo Lakanu, Amcon receiver and manager from Nikon. I'm not sure what this is about, but it also makes the headlines on the punch this morning. And uh, we could also quickly just share one or two from the, the punch. It says, 21-day notice, strike dangerous now. Federal government begs doctors, NMA uh, ministry all disagree. Asu threatens fresh strike, gives federal government Tuesday ultimatum. And also government implements cooking gas imports tax. Price jumps by 100%. Um, NMA faults federal government as uh, minister rejects ultimatum. Citizens' lives under threat, Ehanire laments. That's uh, some other stories on the point this morning. And finally, we're going to take uh, stories from the Guardian newspapers. Despite approvals, absence of port uh, scanners cost government 800 billion naira monthly. Also on The Guardian this morning, handle insecurity creatively, editors advise government. Nigeria needs new revenue sharing formula to address emerging challenges. And also Singapore vaccinates 80% of population against COVID-19. NMA threatens to join Dr. Strike, gives federal government 21-day ultimatum. Uh, that's also on The Guardian this morning. Just a few stories across the, uh, the papers this morning. Um, I'll start with um, one of the stories on The Daily Independent, I believe. Anyway, good morning, Mr. Kolawale. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, my brother. All right. How Let's was start. your weekend again? It, it was beautiful. Let's... Um, Let's um, start with the story from the um, uh, proposed strike by ASU. They've given the federal government uh, uh, till Tuesday, another ultimatum till Tuesday. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? And the, put, a, put that side by side with the NMA also threatening to join the uh, resident doctor's strike in another 21 days. Well, my brother, these are very troubling times for us as a nation. Uh, all those institutions that you have mentioned, the ASU, the NMA, they all represent very critical sectors of the economy. And as such, it is not desirable at all when any of those people lay bull on strike. Take, for example, the medical people. You are now quite aware that the nation is going through very serious problems in the area of the COVID uh, pandemic, the Delta variant, which is considered to be more virulent and which spreads faster, has begun to ravage the country. And uh, the support that the government and the organized private sector were given when this COVID-19 started, that kind of massive support that we saw is no longer coming as it used to come. 
So if the medical people now go on strike, the responsibilities are that uh, the nation might be witnessing a lot of casualties in the uh, health sector. Furthermore, if ASU begins another round of strike, the possibilities are that our children who had stayed at home before now for almost uh, two years because of this ASU strike will again return home. And of course, we know the implication of that. The devil will find jobs for a high two hand to do. That's why you find out they will now come again and join the unemployment market, which is already 33% of the employable persons in the in the country. The girls who embark on the various activities, courtesan will be on the rise, and all manners of uh, undesirable behaviors will be seen among these uh, children. So that's the thing I will want to appeal to the federal government. In the name of God, so please honor the agreement that they have signed with the NMA, with the resident medical doctor, and then with the ASU. Agreement is an agreement. Once individual, once um, uh, adult, uh, uh, a good adult, whose eyes do have their minds and take faculties, in time when they are entering an agreement, you are supposed to uh, honor whatever agreement you were signed entered with the people, and especially when it is an industrial agreement, which uh, you executed in the full glare of a camera and before the whole Nigerian people, and now you begin to say different things. This is not a define at all. It doesn't paint a very good picture for us, both internally and externally. So the board is in the court of the federal government. It is also in the court of uh, the state government that the shoe, for God's sake, in the name of what is good and desirable, please honor whatever agreement they have signed with the medical people and with the ASU so that we don't witness another strike in there. And the lessons again for those who work in those areas, like I used to say, it's desirable for them to strike for good governance all over the country. Until you have had good governance all over the country, it will be difficult, if not impossible, to have a rational allocation of resources across both, such as both health, education, infrastructure, and all other areas of our society will be adequately taken care of. The kind of people we have at the end of our affairs today are like locals who are just ravaging the country in such a manner that uh, they leave little or nothing for the other sectors of the economy to be able to develop. All right. Um, I'm going to say good morning also to Ezekiel Ngayetok, who's uh, also joining us on uh, After Press this morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Huh? Pleasure to be with you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. All right, let's also get your thoughts on the uh, threat by ASU to once again, you know, resume their strike on Tuesday. And the NMA, you know, also given the government 21 days ultimatum. Um, what would you say about the Nigerian government's failure to... Um, adhere to memorandum of actions and memorandum of understanding. You see, there's, there's an unimaginable level of deceit that runs our government. They do things not because they mean it, but because they just want to get rid of you for the time. And that should not be the mentality of government. Government runs on trust. Trust is one extremely important factor in governance anywhere in the world. You need to say something and the people believe you for what you have said. But our governance has degenerated to a point where they sign papers not because they mean it, they say things not because they intend to stand by it. The, the concept of integrity has com almost completely um, eluded us as far as governance is concerned in this country. That is why uh, whenever you want to get into an agreement with government, you just find it very difficult to understand or to, to know what to think, what to believe, or how to get about it. And the only language that really gets government to seemingly wake up or sit up is when you go on strike. And even when you go on strike, this, the, the, the initial um, body language is like um, you are an irritant and they can't understand why you would dare to do that. 
until it starts to bite and the citizens start to complain and they start to feel worried that their position might be, you know, uh, might be affected on the long run. All that matters to government and those in power is their position. Anything that threatens them as individuals, either their party or election that is coming or their resources, you see them waking up and jumping up. But in terms of being committed to the essence of government and governance, as clearly stated in the Constitution, you know, they are in for a different ballgame completely. It's like, look, we're not here for this taking care of you. We took care of you at the election. We are here to take care of ourselves and recover whatever we have done. And I think Nigerians need to start to wake up to this new reality and decide who they would want to get into power uh, in future. All right. Uh, to Nicola Wale, uh, sadly, yes, over, the over the weekend, we lost um, uh, the son of a uh, senator, Bala Na'ala. Uh, his name, Captain Ibn Na'ala, um, over the weekend, Kaduna. Uh, quickly also share your thoughts on that. You mean the killing of his son? Yes. Well, uh, it's, a, it's a tragedy uh, when um, people lose uh, their children in the way a manner um, uh, the senator has lost his uh, Son. So my condolence to the senator and then to entire members of his family and to the friends of this uh, uh, boy. I have lost a son before. I lost my first son uh, some three, four years ago. And you will not believe it that I haven't gotten over it up to today. So I know what uh, the senator will be feeling. And uh, it's in that respect I really uh, sympathize with him. What this tells us is that um, no one is longer safe in this country because I'm aware that uh, most of these uh, high placed politicians, senators, governors, and what have you, they have securities around their children. But still, thanks to that number, some of them have had their families. Uh, uh, being hit or being abducted or being killed by these bandits that we have uh, all over the country. It is uh, for the people, not just in the legislature, for the executive arm of court, and including the to begin to treat this issue, uh, give it the fact. It is now obvious. If I'm of government alone, for sure to address this issue. It is now obvious that it is beyond them. And it is for that reason that one will want to say and appeal to the legislator and the judiciary to help the people in the sector of government to sort this out. Nobody is safe again in this country. Uh, generals have been uh, harassed, intimidated, abducted, and kidnapped. Emirs have been kidnapped. School children have been kidnapped. Life and property no longer have meaning in Nigeria. These are all indicators of a failed state. What this is signifying is that Nigeria as a nation has collapsed, that the security architecture that we have on ground today is not working. And to that extent, uh, it won't be too much if the people in the legislative arm of government will do the needful. If the executive, the people in the legislative arm of government no longer have the capacity to discharge their responsibility, their primary responsibility to secure lives and property. Then the legislators should do the needful. Get rid of that executive arm of government so that we can have people who are in power, who will be allied to their responsibility and who will be able to guarantee the security of lives and property all right. to all our people all over the country, wherever they may be. All right. Mr. Ayatok, can you also quickly share your thoughts on that one? Uh, some people have, you know, pointed out certain things that have happened in the last, you know, few years and said, oh, maybe this will be the wake-up call. Um, now it's affected a, you know, sitting senator. Um, how bad do you think this is? I, I think it's actually worse than we, we report. And um, the reason is simple. The security and welfare of the people is far from being the priority of the people in government. And that is going against the spirit 
of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I think that every senator, every assemblyman, once they get into the chambers, they should all recite that section of the Constitution. Chapter 2, Section 14, Subsection 2B. It states, the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. When you talk of government, government has three arms. You have the executive, the judiciary, and the legislature. I can rephrase it and say, the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of the National Assembly. The security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of the National Assembly. When they recite this on a daily basis, my, my hope is that one day they will come to understand the import, the purport, and the prognosis of that statement. Because what they are doing, they don't seem to know why they are there. The day that our security matters, our priorities will be rearranged. And I call on Nigerians again to think of that passage or that, that section of the Constitution and think in their leadership recruitment, to play down on collecting money from politicians, to play down on thinking that election time is the time that they benefit from government, and know that you cannot have a little window of one day and then bargain it off against four years. It doesn't make sense. Nigerians should wake up. I have actually stopped blaming people in government. I am actually no longer really interested in doing that again because they got into a contract with us. They paid us in exchange for four years for themselves. I think we need to reverse that by talking to ourselves first and think of sending people and not being bargained against to collect you know, our power for four years. Yeah, but, but also... We can't, also we can't, also, Mr. Yes. Ayatok, apologies. Um, pretty much the same thing with the attack on the Nigerian Defense Academy. The government made statements about um, making sure that the perpetrators are brought to book and some of all of that. We've heard that so many, so many other times um, uh, here in Nigeria. Um, I'm sure that you know, there would be a similar statement made here, but there doesn't seem to be actual arrest being made and prosecution for some of these criminals you know, that are running rogue across the country. So don't you feel like that is one thing that has, you know, maybe let this thing continue? There are statements, I said before, and I say it again. There are statements are things that you just like copy and paste. It's never the thing that comes from their heart. The only statement that comes from their heart and they mean it is what affects them directly or indirectly. That's when they come on hard. You know, I, I, I um, um, maybe you've not taken the part on the on the Meiti Allah and the body language, the stance, the disposition of Mr. President, and you see how he comes, he takes certain issues personal. Certain issues are no-go areas. He's willing to bend over backwards. He's willing to use a sledgehammer to kill a fly to get to person is. When will the security and welfare of the man in Ikodepene give Mr. President a sleepless night? When will the life of the Almajiri boy on the street who has no future, no life, make Mr. President to say this is not okay? When will that woman who goes to prayer house in Ikate instead of going to the, to the hospital because she can't afford, and the, the medical facilities are not enough, and the doctors are on strike. When will, he, when will her life be so important to Mr. President that he goes down on, on, on all fours, if need be, to say, no, this is not enough? I think that we should be careful, the people that we send into office. I, will, I could never say this enough. Our leadership recruitment criteria must be looked into again. We've become the poverty capital of the world. We've become one of the most, uh, three most terrorized nations in the world. We have become one of the top five most insecure places in the world. What else do we want before we can wake up? I call on Nigerians to wake up. I call on the complicit you know, elite to wake up. I call on the so-called professionals like us to wake up and know that this is not okay and All start right. to talk.
and start to reach out and start to say it is not enough. That is why I will always commend the National Consultative Front for wanting to come and give alternative narrative. I want all Nigerians to wake up. Okay, um, uh, let's uh, quickly then share one last uh, story, and that is on the nation this morning. It's talking about uh, um, uh, Festus Kayamo. It says, government unaware of planned power tariff uh, hike. Um, to Nicola Wally, let's start with you on that one. There, was, uh, there were some fears last week when there was uh, supposedly a notice put out asking discos, and this is from the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, asking discos to um, go ahead with a power tariff uh, hike from the 1st of September. Uh, Professor Skayamo has said that that is, you know, they are not uh, aware of that. And same thing with the um, um, EKEDC. Mr. Kolawole, do you think that... Paper. Do you uh, even before today... All right, go ahead. Just go there ahead. was something on the social media in which uh, the people in charge of electricity were said to have issued a notice of a power increase. The journalists went and interviewed the man who signed the notice only for the man to begin to think that uh, there is no intentment to increase uh, the, 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 the tariff in the system. The truth of the matter is that they have always been playing games with us, just like uh, my brother, who is uh, running this commentary with me, has said. For the people in government, they have no respect for the Nigerian people. All the activities are carried out with impunity. They look us on like a, but they, they call us a bloody civilian. And uh, as of today, they, and uh, before now, that they were going to ensure that every home has a prepared meter. After that, if you have prepared meter, you can always regulate whatever power that you have called. Have they fulfilled that promises to all of us? The answer is uh, no. All that we've been getting most of the time is promises and promises. Now, the question I would want to ask is this. If people have to pay as much as 10,000, 30,000 for power consumption in a night, or maybe a mini flat or a room and palace that cost. And this kind of a process are on um, a monthly uh, salary of a, which is um, what they call the minimum wage, which most, which most of the states are coming and finding difficult to pay. And that those who are on minimum wage, for example, all the women in the village, say a cam who sells pepper, who sells uh, cola north, will not be entitled. Is that what we are saying? The truth is that uh, they have sold this power to themselves and people who don't know the nitty gritty of generating and distributing power. And that is what the Nigerian people are paying for today. Inefficiency in the sector. They thought the power sector would just be like the telecommunication and which they be given paper and then they will start running in, in a GSM company and start ripping a particular harvest without knowing that it's a more complicated game over there. And rather than hand over or hands off that sector and let those who have the wear with us to run the power sector efficiently and cheaply, they have refused to do that. The power sectors were sold to former president, former head of state, former army general, chief executive, who have, who have no knowledge of any, or let me engineering whatsoever. All right. What I'm for today. My opinion, once again, is the Nigerian people have been too tolerant of their leaders. They allow them to get away with too many things. And it is high time we begin to stand up as a people and challenge those who are imposed upon us as a nation. Okay. I have uh, lost interest in the Gwari administration. I and I said this for a long time ago that this government will merely one bullet until we conduct another election in 2003. If anybody is still expecting any good from this government, that person is wasting his time. All but right. for the power Thanks sector, Lord. the Such Nigerian the people that must yeah. now rise up and say no, enough is enough. We don't want to pay any increase or we don't want any rise again. In the tariff in that sector, the Nigerian people are already paying enough. You know, give us prepared meter funds. If every home is uh, having prepared meter and they can regulate their own power consumption, and we see transparency, we see transparency, then we begin to talk about the increase in the uh, tariff. But this um, idea 
of saying that uh, that power is not that. Uh, you, you, you begin to wonder. This time there is a fall in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, the people in the power sector who also increase their tariffs. As if the water that can generate electricity in Kanji Dam is imported. As right. if uh, uh, let's, let's uh, bring the in, gas uh, Mr. that Yaito. they are using to power some of the plants are not that. Uh, totally everything is imported. As if the poles, uh, the, the, the electric poles are not that. Okay. Are made, no. uh, As if right. they are imported. I, I, Mr. Kola, can you hold, hold on? Um, Mr. Yeah, Yaitok, you know, I want you to... My, my brother, Kolo Wele, yeah, because well, he uh, Mr. Yaitok, I want you to also add this, uh, one of the stories on the punch this morning. It says, government implements cooking gas imports tax, price jumps by 100%. Um, so it's not, you know, just past, you know, um, electricity tariffs, you know, that we're talking about uh, increase. Now, also, cooking gas, um, even if, yeah, just to quickly also mention that the... Um, uh, EKEDC and FESS KM will have both denied that there will be any increment. But go ahead. The first thing is that, for goodness sake, why can't we run governance that makes sense? Kiamo, to the best of my knowledge, is Minister of State for Labor. There is power minister. And then Labor minister is talking on power on behalf of power. It just doesn't add up, doesn't make sense. What's really wrong with this administration? The doctor's strike. I expect that case, my brother, the Kiamo, will be concentrating on the strike. Why is it jumping into power? I don't understand. Don't we have a minister of power? Anyway, it's, it's like the stock in trade of this administration. Anybody, the CBN can go into, you know, the Ministry of Finance issues, and Ministry of Finance can go into housing. And, I mean, it's just muddled up. And what do you expect? At the end of the day, we have a system that really doesn't understand that government... It's so important that next after God is government, is the next most important institution. And there's something called quackery in professionalism. Do we have quacks in power? And if we have quacks in power, why should Nigerians expect anything better? I think that God will help us to manage till 2023, but that the beginning of our rescue should be on our psyche and mentality and resolve to ensure that we will get the right pilot to pilot aircraft and not engineers. And that we will get architects to design our houses and not draftsmen. We will get doctors to do their jobs and not, you know, other uh, paramedical staff or things like that. Each of them have their role. Let everybody play their role in their assigned and their professional areas so that we can have a system that works, so that we can have a governance that is focused. I think that all these things is because we are getting the wrong people into the places of work and the answer cannot be anything different from the confusion that we are having now. Well, you know, how, how strenuous would this be for Nigerians if there's going to be an increment in some of all these things? Um, a lot of Nigerians already can't or are struggling to afford um, electricity and, and cooking gas. It's, it's, brother, when you prioritize your people, you will know the things to subsidize. You will know where to subsidize it. You know how to subsidize it when you prioritize the welfare of your people. But when it is about how you can make money, your contract, you are looking at the bottom line to you as an individual, selfishness, you are selfish, you are self-centered, you are inconsiderate. We will continue to have policies that bite on the poor that are already dead. That's why we have taxes, tax them more, tax them more, tax them more. Get, get is like pulling and not giving back. And we don't even understand that the, the, the cow that is fatted gives you more milk. The cow that is lean have less milk. Wisdom demands fatten the cow and get more milk. That's just right thinking. But the government says, no, forget about fattening the cow, just keep pulling, keep pulling. Even when nothing is coming out, they're not even wise enough to understand that nothing is coming out. The people are suffering. The people are suffering. The people are suffering. And government doesn't even know about it. And they're just like, so I think that the people need to wake up and look at our leadership recruitment uh, uh, profiling criteria. 
And that's going to be the beginning. Outside of that, all these commentaries that we are running, we just next year we'll come here and run the same commentary, and then um, unless we wake up, but right. we'll have about two, we have about two years. Gonna... Nigeria has about two years to you know fix that uh, leadership recruitment process, and you know hope, hopefully make better decisions uh, in uh, 2023. But thanks very much, Ezekiel Nyayetok, for joining us. Always a pleasure to see you, and of course Tunde Kolawole. Thank you also for joining us this morning. We wish you a great week ahead. All right, that's it for Off the Press. It's where we have a quick review of stories making headlines across uh, the country every morning. Stay with us. We'll go back in history to tell you uh, certain things that happened on this day, the 30th of August, a couple of years ago, here on The Breakfast. <laughs>